I'm Łukasz Borkman, I'm a research scientist from Snowflake. And uh, recently I was involved in uh, two out of three Arctic family models that we released, uh, namely Arctic LLM, which is a general purpose uh, language model for enterprise tasks, and Arctic Tilt, which is model dedicated to document understanding scenarios, so cases where in addition to the textual semantics, uh, you have to understand also special arrangement of text on the page, for example, to interpret table, uh, and also visual clues such as lines, uh, checkboxes, and so on. And recently, we released also uh, Arctic Embed, uh, which is model dedicated for uh, semantic retrieval or uh, retrieval augmented generation tasks. Uh, two of these are open sourced, uh, that is Arctic Embed and Arctic LLM. We will see what happens with uh, Arctic Tilt. Uh, in addition, uh, in case of Arctic LLM, uh, we are releasing also the cookbook, which is a series of uh, articles on our data receipts, uh, metrics, and so on and so on. So we claim we are truly open because in addition to weights and code uh, and examples, we are also releasing the complete receipt, at least that's the idea, and it is being released at the moment in parts. Uh, so let's say you had uh, well-deserved vacations, a uh, year without uh, access to the internet. Uh, I know it is a torture for some of us. And you are back uh, in your company, and you were asked to apply LLM to automate some process. Mm. And well, uh, believe me or not, uh, during the year you were absent, uh, nothing has changed. We are not destroyed by AGI. Uh, LLMs are still around, still fashionable, and you have to figure out uh, which model is the best. Well, uh, the useful heuristic would be to just go with whatever GPT uh, version we have at the moment. But it might happen that some 10-person uh, startup with 20 billion valuation came with uh, a better model. So this is the moment where uh, some of us resolved to public benchmarks. And there are plenty of uh, leaderboards and individual metrics available. Uh, moreover, if you take a look on the papers or technical reports uh, released, uh, related to uh, the released models, uh, you will notice aggregate uh, metrics such as word knowledge compromising of uh, several uh, benchmarks or common sense reasoning or language understanding. And you may wonder, what does it even mean? Uh, so let's uh, focus on uh, one popular and, and great benchmark uh, for evaluating LLMs, which is MMLU and see what is inside. So MMLU stands for Massive Multitask Language Understanding. Uh, massive because it consists of over 14,000 questions. Uh, all of them are multi-choice. Multitask because it evaluates various branches of human knowledge. So we have both multi-choice questions requiring some mathematical knowledge, but we also have ethical dilemmas and so on and so on. And when it comes to language understanding parts, uh, it means nothing. Uh, so, so we have this uh, great benchmark. Uh, so let's see uh, on a couple of examples of the questions we have inside. So there are questions from astronomy. I don't know if you are able to uh, answer such a question. I am uh, definitely not. Uh, there are questions from archaeology. Uh, there are also questions requiring some factual uh, knowledge. Uh, so you may wonder how uh, models gather such uh, uh, general uh, word knowledge. How do we improve? And this, is, this uh, usually happens, or the easiest way to achieve improvements in terms of uh, word knowledge is just to spend more money. Uh, that is, models that uh, seen larger amount of tokens during the training or have a larger number of active parameters in general are better uh, in MMLU and similar knowledge intensive tasks. So you may wonder if it is even worth uh, devoting uh, such amounts of money to 
uh, increase uh, on this particular benchmark. Uh, and here is an example that can help us uh, to uh, answer this question. So MMLU, as I said, is a multitask benchmark. There are several uh, categories. One of the categories is uh, the professional medicine category. Uh, here we have uh, a few shot performance on MMLU, medical, uh, professional medicine category. Uh, we have uh, some of the recently released models uh, mentioned. And you may wonder if it is you know, uh, good enough or not. But hopefully, uh, professional medicine category is based on real examination that is taking place uh, in the US. So if you want to practice medical profession, uh, there is a test. And this test has a threshold that human test takers uh, have to reach in order to pass the test. And this threshold is 60%. So all of the current models, uh, I would say, are pretty decent, in, uh, at least when uh, MMLU professional medicine category is uh, considered. Uh, moreover, we are nearly reaching the performance of top 5% human test takers. So I would say, well, I, I'm perfectly happy with the performance of current models uh, and not necessarily interested in gathering you know, more extensive world knowledge. Maybe there is some other area uh, that we would like to focus at the moment. Uh, because at the end of the day, what is the level of medical knowledge should an accountant have? So if you have some end applications that is related to, I don't know, processing financial reports, you probably are perfectly happy with the model that is not top tier MMLU performing LLM. Uh, but this benchmark is, uh, and, and similarly uh, also other knowledge intensive benchmarks and uh, academic benchmarks, uh, are good guardrails, uh, meaning that, well, if we know the rule that roughly explains the performance on MMLU, we can use it to make sure nothing suspicious is happening uh, during our training or that we are not, you know, using models that have some uh, clear flaws. But as long as you are on the line uh, and you are not an outlier, at least in a negative sense on this plot, uh, we are good. So what happens if you place focus outside word knowledge? We did it exer this exercise in the uh, case of Arctic LLM. Uh, and we did a review of uh, some of the commonly used metrics. And we divided them into two groups, uh, guardrails, where we are not you know, that interested in having top tier performance. We are perfectly happy with having whatever is reasonable for a given compute. Uh, and we identified uh, metrics that our clients, uh, when we talk with them, were interested in concerning their AI use cases. So you already know uh, we'll be not that interested in improving world knowledge. We are perfectly happy with uh, some reasonable performance there, uh, but not top tier. Uh, we are also not interested in improving, well, metrics that we can cover under umbrella term of language understanding and reasoning. Uh, for example, uh, they require some common sense knowledge or uh, reading comprehension that is either remote from uh, business use cases because it is, uh, for example, high school uh, related stuff. Uh, or it is common sense reasoning that it is nice that the model have at a certain level, but well, it is not the end uh, objective. What our clients were interested in uh, was also not mathematics, because mathematics, as we measure it, is remote from the business applications. It is usually some high school uh, tests that require entirely different or uh, slightly different, at least, kind of reasoning than what you expect from the model analyzing financial reports. Uh, so we. Uh, created this uh, set of enterprise metrics that consists of uh, code abilities, uh, because code generation can be used to you know, automate process, uh, generating uh, reports, uh, help you analyze the data, so all kinds of data copilots. Uh, data copilots that are also related to uh, SQL capabilities. 
but uh, this is no-brainer that uh, Snowflake, we are interested in model SQL capabilities. Uh, but the important part is also instruction following. Because, I don't know, if you try to automate some process with GPT-4, RECA, or whatever model, it not necessarily gets you. And if you want to automate something, you want the output to have you know, a strictly defined form. If you want the output to be placed in, in a database table, for example, as a date, you want uh, on the output only the date uh, that the model predicts, not verbose uh, text uh, that explains you know, why this is this date or why it is wrong to ask for this date. Uh, so instruction following abilities are crucial. So accuracy in which model is strictly following what you are asking for is crucial concerning uh, business applications. Uh, and this is the first dimension uh, across which uh, we wanted to differentiate uh, Arctic LLM. But there is more, uh, because business is interested not only about the performance uh, in particular uh, tasks, but uh, business wants this performance at the lowest possible cost. So we want to model to be cheap in training. Uh, and more importantly, we want it to uh, be cheap in use. Uh, the third differentiator is what I mentioned at the beginning, introducing Arctic LLM, that we wanted the model uh, to be truly open. So it is, this, in addition to the fact it is on permissive Apache 2.0 license, uh, we are also releasing all the details, knowledge, and insights uh, we get uh, during the training. So I see the Arctic project as kind of exercise. So we wanted to choose the metrics and see what is the lower amount of dollars we can spend to, to get their top tier performance. And this uh, efficient intelligence comes from uh, three things. Uh, first is model architecture innovations. Uh, our architecture differs from uh, what was proposed before. Uh, and uh, dynamic data curriculum, uh, we'll elaborate on in, uh, it in a minute. Uh, moreover, we have uh, an efficient training system that is, uh, was co-evolved with the model architecture innovations we introduced. <clears throat> so, uh, there can be quite a useful analogy uh, concerning uh, model architecture and comparison of dense models such as LAMA, uh, mixture of experts models that you may know like uh, DBRX or Mixtral, uh, and Arctic uh, LLM, which is quite different variant of uh, mixture of experts that we refer to as hybrid uh, dense mixture of expert models. And this uh, useful analogy is analogy of hospital. So uh, dense transformer such as LAMA is a hospital where there is only a single doctor that all the patients go to. So deep and less of your problem, of your health issue, you go to the same doctor. He knows everything about everyone. Uh, in case of uh, training transformers, it means it's seen all the data during the training. Uh, in a case of a mixture of experts transformer, you have a hospital with a few specialists like cardiologists. <clears throat> But there is a limit to this uh, diversity. So we, have, we, we tell we have a coarse-grained uh, experts. In the case of you know, DBRX or Mixtra model, it is usually uh, eight or uh, 16 experts. Uh, but one may wonder if you can have more experts. So uh, in our hospital analogy, it would be the case where in addition to cardiologists, you have cardiologists for people uh, doing sports, uh, elderly people, and so on and so on. So you have even higher specialization. And you may wonder why, why not everyone is doing it. And this is uh, the place when we uh, can use uh, also different analogy that will uh, make it clearer. So let's say you are studying at a small university, you have uh, a couple of hours to uh, each day to, to, to gather uh, new knowledge. And in, if 
the, the, the case of a uh, standard, let's say, mixture of expert transformer is the case where you need, uh, the, the, the campus is very narrow, uh, is located, uh, let's say, in, in, in a single building. So you don't have a much overhead to commute between individual classes. The classes are not that interesting to you. You cannot specialize because there's a limited number of them, but at least they're all located in a strict uh, area that uh, for commuting you can uh, use, for example, 10 minutes instead of 30 minutes, which would be the case of the more extensive, uh, <coughs> more extensive university with a uh, higher, more broader offer and uh, longer time needed for communication. So how we solve this problem? We solve this problem with hybrid architecture, which in our analogy is something like uh, the university from the last story, but where you have, uh, let's say, podcast or original uh, or additional materials that you can use uh, when commuting uh, from class to class. So in this case, uh, on each device, we have uh, a small dense model that sees all the data, but in addition, uh, but, but this model is trained when uh, there is the communication ongoing between data located on individual devices and uh, experts spread, spread uh, across individual devices. Uh, another feature of uh, Arctic LLM is dynamic data curriculum. So usually <coughs> uh, when training LLMs, the usual approach is to have a blended uh, data mix, uh, but we uh, did it differently and it coincidentally, or maybe there is uh, a reason, <clears throat> is similar to how people uh, learn during their lifetime. So during our lifetime, we start from you know, general concepts, such as some basic reasoning we uh, learn in elementary school, basic language understanding, and we move to more abstract or uh, harder concepts uh, during our education and professional career. And this is uh, what we uh, did in case of LLM training. So we start from simple uh, texts, not non-professional texts like uh, general language, uh, some literature, uh, and we gradually move to STEM coding uh, when the train mix uh, goes up. And it seems uh, it has impact not only, uh, for example, in this simple ablation on having higher performance on this STEM or coding task, but also improve the language and reasoning because we are not interrupting model when it knows you know, almost nothing about word uh, and language at the beginning of the training with tasks it is not capable of solving anyway. And the first uh, thing is efficient training system. Uh, maybe let's skip this part. We have a very great uh, blog posts in the Arctic cookbook series where you can read what optimizations we did. So what do you get uh, when you take into account uh, this receipt? Uh, what is uh, the performance you can expect from Arctic LLM? So here uh, is the comparison of the training, of the compute we use as a training compared to some other models. And uh, what is referred to here as enterprise intelligence, which is essentially the average of SQL uh, coding and instruction following performance. So you see, uh, we are able to outperform models which are at, at the fraction of the cost. Uh, so we are either, uh, well, here we are having actually the highest performance from the models mentioned uh, for the fraction of the cost. But as an end user, okay, training is important either if you want to fine tune the model because you can hope it will correspond uh, to the cost you have to uh, have in order to uh, find the model for your use business use cases. But, but if you want to apply the model off the shelf without fine tuning, you are probably more interested in inference time. But because of low number of active parameters uh, that result from this uh, fine granularity of experts, uh, we can have a good uh, performance cost ratio uh, when it comes to the inference too. So here we have a, a similar 
uh, analysis. And you can uh, try, and we encourage you to try Arctic on the, uh, some of the uh, services, uh, some of the LLM uh, inference providers, as well as, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is also available in Hugging Face, so I encourage you to uh, play with the Arctic LLM and uh, give it a chance. Uh, but let's go back to uh, the problem I introduced at, at the beginning. Uh, so here you have these knowledge intensive questions. Uh, I said I don't know the answer to these questions, but I imagine a scenario when I can find the answer. And this scenario is simply Googling uh, the topic, analyzing the results, and figuring out the answer either by you know, directly copying it from search results or inferring it uh, from a couple of uh, results I got. And this is uh, where we can hope that even, you know, without having a model that already knows all the stuff, possesses all the uh, human knowledge that was uh, present in its training data, uh, but is good in general reasoning capabilities, if we extend it with some external database and ability to search for relevant information, maybe it is enough. Maybe instead of you know, sacrificing huge amounts of money to train a model that memorize stuff, let's uh, do a model which is good in reasoning. And we hope to achieve that. But in addition to do this, uh, in addition to the model, you need also a great uh, retrieval component. And this is where Arctic Advent uh, kicks in. Uh, so we released also uh, embeddings. Uh, on one of the previous talks, uh, we talked about how embeddings can be used to uh, cluster uh, similar uh, incidents related to the data. Uh, so you will already know uh, what it's all about. Uh, and Arctic Embed shares uh, the same hope that, that we had uh, concerning business applications, that is, it is the model that outperforms or, or performs of, of on par to closed source models that are believed to be four times the size of uh, Arctic Embed. Uh, but in the retrieval-based scenarios, uh, it happens that the original source document uh, were not plain text. For example, imagine financial reports you are chunking, you are converting it to the plain text, uh, you are uh, chunking it into fragments, you are retrieving fragments from f financial reports that were relevant concerning the questions uh, you asked uh, for. Uh, <clears throat> but it could happen, and it actually happened very often, that the information you are looking for in the original document was placed in a table, uh, not in the plain text, and it is extremely inefficient to hope that plain text LLM will recover and understand the table. You need much bigger models uh, to recover the table that was massacred uh, during the process of converting to the plain text. And this is why we have Arctic Tilt, which performs on par or better to GPT-4 vision in task demanding document understanding uh, while having thousand times less parameters. And it shares uh, the same idea of you know, focusing on high performance in terms of accuracy uh, and high performance in terms of low number of active parameters. Uh, to wrap up, uh, both Arctic LLM and Arctic Embeds are open source. You can play with uh, Arctic LLM uh, in Streamlit app. You don't need uh, to log in there uh, and to pay uh, anything. So yeah, I, I hope you will. Uh, play, it, uh, play with it, it uh, for a little. Uh, thank you very much and sorry for the, uh, all the technical problems we had. Uh, if you will have any questions, I will be walking around. Uh, don't hesitate to approach me. I will happily answer uh, to all the questions you may have. Thank you very much.